Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 27th of May 2022 in today's Mill News. Not much going on, a bit light day to day. So I'm going to start off with this from newsatden.co.uk and it's their player of the year. Now if you didn't know, the News at Den, um, they do the match report every Saturday and I think on the Sunday they do a, a story where it lets you underneath they have a little thing where you can click on it and you can give a score out of 10 to each player uh, who played in the game, including substitutes. And it's usually quite crazy, to be honest with you. It's either 10 out of 10, absolutely amazing, or it's 2 out of 10, fucking dog shit. But, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how me all fans are, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sure you know that. Um, so... They've put this story up. They've um, added up all the scores, the average, yearly average, season average. And it turns out Danny McNamara has been voted in News at Den's Mill Player of the Year for 21 22 based on ratings by Lions fans. The 23 year old defender carded in an average score of 7.06 in News at Den's player rating system last season. McNamara made 38 appearances in all competitions and scored his first. Mill goals are bracing the four and win against Barnsley at the Den in April. McNamara ended the season with a better average rating than the Bartos Biakowski, 6.77. So, uh, goalkeeper Biakowski, 34, played in every minute of every league game in 21 22 and kept 14 clean sheets. Marion Wallace was the third uh, over the course of the season. Wallace, 29, played 44 times and scored six goals, the most by a Lions defender across the campaign. So there you go. There's your your one, two, three. Uh, Danny McNamara, Bartosz Piotrowski, and Murray Wallace, and that's the same top three as was voted Player of the Season, but in the reversed roles. Murray Wallace was obviously Player of the Season. McNamara was second, and Piotrowski was third. But here, uh, according to the votes on this website, Danny McNamara first, Bart second, and Murray Wallace third. So. Same three players, just uh, in a different order there. Um, moving on now to Gary Rowett. We've got a quote from Gary Rowett. I think he's still doing his weekly talk to the press, uh, to the local press, and they're getting their stories out of it, which is good to see, because I need to make videos, don't I? Um, so what's happening? What did he say? Uh, I'm not disappointed. Mill boss and why he didn't want Leeds to be relegated to the championship. Uh, Mill supporters were left disappointed that Leeds United avoided the Premier League drop on the final day of the season, uh, denying a renewal of the rivalry between the two clubs next season. But Lions manager Gary Rowett did not feel the same way. The Yorkshire club needed to better Burnley's result on Sunday to secure survival. Leeds won 2 1 at Brentford with Jack Harrison scoring a 90th minute winner. The Clarets lost 2 1 at home to Newcastle to seal the end of their sixth season stay in the top flight. There is a hostility between the fan bases of Mill and Leeds, which led to some spicy encounters on the pitch. The Lions did the double over United in 2017-18 campaign. Jed Wallace with a late winner in a topsy-turvy 4-3 at Ellen Road in January. What a crazy game that was. Um, uh, I'm not disappointed at Leeds not being in the championship, said Rowett. It is one of the places which is very difficult to go and play football. It's a great atmosphere. I appreciate it is a brilliant away down the rivalry is strong between the fans, but as a manager, you look at the clubs and you think will be really, really strong next season. It can be hard to tell, but Evan is another one I didn't want to come down because you presume they would just bounce straight back up quite comfortably. Uh, all those clubs coming out of the Premier League have parachute payments behind them and Premier League squads. Uh, Millwall and QPR will be the only London clubs in the Championship next season after Fulham clinched an instant return. There are plenty of long trips north, with Sunderland, Rotherham and Wigan coming up from League One. Norwich and Watford, who have both been yo-yo clubs in recent seasons, will look to mount another challenge. I think the fans being in the grounds will play a huge part because in previous years it had been quite difficult, uh, said Rat. In some ways it was easy for them to play with less pressure and make that step to bounce straight back. Sunderland are a huge club in any division, it's good to see them back up. You've got to presume the three coming down will all be strong again and to make a real challenge. All three have been in the championship recently so it's not going to be a shock to some of their players. Um, but the championship will be the same as ev every other year. There will be one or two surprises and one or two who expect to be there. It's going to be really, really tough as usual. 
And then they tack on this uh, bit about Dan Moss at the end. Dan Moss has signed a two-year deal with Vogue quickly resolving his future after being released by Millwall, the 21-year-old joined the Lions from Burnley in 2019 and captain their under-23 side. He played in the first half of last season on loan at Woking. For No, he was on loan. This is wrong. He was on loan at Rioval for the Woking manager when he was the manager of Yeovil. He left Yeovil and went to Woking. And as soon as he found out Dan Moss was available, he snapped him up because he played. Dan Moss played really well at Yeovil, including on a televised game on BBC in the FA Cup before a temporary switch saw in, in January, where he hardly ever played. Um, so who wrote that? Who, who, who wrote that? That's wrong. Richard Corley. Okay. Uh, hey, we all make mistakes. Um, so, yeah, he's saying he didn't want Leeds to come down because they're a big club. They probably get the finances to sort themselves out and go back up. Um... They made the decision to fire their manager, Bielsa, um, popular guy, but he was losing um, the plot. And they just fired him early. Burnley had done similar, they fired Daesh. Um, although Burnley had literally just every season scraping the battle, um, scraping around the bottom of the barrel, and uh, they couldn't get out of it this year. They, they come unstuck, and it turns out... Um, Burnley are in a bit of financial trouble, so they have a loan they have to repay, apparently. And um, so their parachute payments will be going towards that. So what what Browett was saying is you don't want f three strong teams coming down and then going straight back up because we, we're trying to get in the top six. So if three, if three of the places of the top six have already been claimed or look to be claimed by the three coming down that leaves three places for the rest of us in the championship which is it's going to be harder for Millwall to get in there and if there's a basket case coming down or one or two from the chat from the premier league if they start losing it um i think i heard something about norwich city going a bit uh crazy as well the fans are upset about saying they want um the director fired and they want a change of ownership or for, or for something uh, some reason I don't know what's going on there, but hopefully if that implodes, um, that will help us as well. Yeah, we don't want three strong teams coming down. We want ones who are in a bit of trouble and take time to adjust, and that will help Millwall to get into that top six, which is what we want to do. Uh, or, yeah. Um, indeed. And not only that, but leads away all the restrictions that, um, that they put in place in terms of having to go to the motorway service station to pick up your ticket before the game and all that nonsense. Or you, or you just travel. You, if you're travelling independently, if you're travelling on the club's official coaches, yeah, that's fine. They they get your tickets there, but all a bit of a nonsense. But um, yeah. We are playing Burnley. Not only that, but Burnley. So I showed you in the other day, in the video the other day, when I told you about the Lancashire teams you, on that M65 corridor. You've got Blackpool, Preston, uh, Burnley, and Blackpool. Uh, Burnley and Blackburn. And they're all pretty close together. But, um, there's pretty um, fierce rivalries between some of them. So if they can... Uh, a few of those games can end in draws that'll help us out as well and uh, we shall see we shall see so moving on now to this from millwarefc.co.uk Millwall are searching for a lead physical performance coach um, some more job adverts going up on the Millwall website published by Millwall um, um, they've done this quite re recently for quite a few jobs um, and I assume it must be working because they keep doing it. Um, probably better than, uh, better putting it on the website than uh, and Twitter and all that, um, than advertising it down a job center. So, what are they looking for here? Lead physical performance coach. Okay, this is for the first team. Uh, Mill Football Club is hiring a lead physical performance coach. We are seeking a progressive, enthusiastic. An 
innovative practitioner to join us to enhance our provision of physical performance coach with our first team. Click the link for a full job description and details of how to apply here. Um, shall we have a look? I didn't pull it up before. Uh, so hopefully it loads. Should have really done this before I filmed, started filming the video. Aha. Uh, that's a lot of words. I'm not going to read all that. Um, where, what are some of the highlights? Collection of first team sports science and monitoring data, including wellness questionnaires. Hey, um, Murray, how are you feeling? I'm good, boss. Sweet. A readiness to train screening. How are you feeling? You're ready to train? Yes, boss. Okay, let's go. Um, design appropriate gym based conditioning programs for individual players based on individual needs. Adjusting appropriately following review. Um, assist with preparation for training and matches, including nutritional, technical, and physical equipment and supplies. Um, and this is everything you need to have. Evidence of CPD event attendance in the last two to three years. What is CPD? Isn't that the thing that's in cannabis? Uh, that they've legalized? That doesn't really do anything. Uh, experience in using power by. Oh, is that a sex, sex thing? Um, so there you go, personal skills, able in to interact with levels of staff in a professional manner and maintain professional conduct at all times, to be flexible, to undertake other duties when needed. Yeah, go and get those cones, but I'm the lead physical performance coach, so what? Just go and get those cones and bring them in. Uh, Master's or doctorate's degree in sports science, a first aid certificate, uh, basis accreditation, I don't know what that is, NSCA, ASCC, or UKSCA certified. Wow, look at all those abbreviations. Uh, yeah, and the closing date on that is 8th of June, so. I'm sure someone out there knows what all of this stuff me means and would probably want a job at Millwall. And if you don't meet any of these criteria, well, let me tell you, Millwall are advertising for another job, uh, not as physical, because it is the first team data analysis. So if you're a fat lard ass who spends all day on the computer, like uh, someone yeah uh, like me um the lions are hiring a first team data analysis for the first team um the successful candidate and this has had more views 893 views on this one the successful candidate will work alongside the first team performance analysis to identify patterns and trends that can enhance the coaching process and support the manager and coaching staff in their pre-match Opposition analysis and post match performance reviews. Click the link for a full job description and details of how to apply. And this is also application closing on Wednesday, the 8th of June, so what, two weeks to go. Let's have a look at this one. Uh huh. What do you need to do this? Uh, you need to have won. Well, you need to have won uh, the Premier League on Football Manager. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, using data from multiple sources to produce dashboards, visualizations, and reports that can inform, can inform coaching decisions. Uh, developing data metrics that will enhance the performance analysis process. Uh, tracking the playing time and performance of the club's loan players. Sharing data, video, and other content with staff, players, and management. Assist with filming of training and matches as required, providing individual video and statistical feedback. Um, 
undertake any part departmental and or club CBD. There's that word again. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, what you need to have, you need to be able to count. You need to be numerate. They want a degree as well or extensive experience working in data analysis at a professional club. Uh, comfortable manipulating large data sets and performing various statistical analyses. Experience using R and or Python. Now I know that is a computer program language, isn't it? Python. Advanced user of Excel. Yeah, I can barely use Excel. Um, advanced user of Tableau, Power BI or equivalent. Hmm. Knowledge and experience of software packages such as Huddle, Sports Code, and Y Scout. Uh huh. Familiarity, familiarity with programming languages such as JavaScript, SQL, or similar. Why would you need that? You've got to make your own programs to analyze the data rather than buying it off the shelf. Um. Or just to, to batch it up to um, individualize it. Um, so you buy a script uh, off, off the internet and just tweak it to what you want, I guess. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, if that interests you, send your CV to that. Closing date in two weeks. And there you have it. Um, yeah, another job being advertised by Emil Wall. Now, why is this? I don't think this is a new role. I think so. What's happened to the guy that's already there? Now I think it's a bit like the players. Um, the wages that we offer. Now we're offering. There's a lot of um, people trying to get into these types of jobs, especially in professional football. And we offer a way in, but it's like an entry level, low wages. Get your foot in the door. Get in, uh if you've got all this stuff. Um, the requirements and, and the um, things that they want you to have you can get a job at Millwall with this you can't get a job in a Premier League team or maybe another championship team but you can get a job at Millwall Millwall will give you a job and then once you're there you can have put it on your CV that you was at Millwall doing this job and then you can leave somewhere and go somewhere else and get more money and I think that's what we're doing here and it's probably quite similar to what's happening with the um, the actual first team um, in terms of like Jed Wallace leaving to want to, wanting to play in the Premier League and wanting to, to leave and get more money um, that's how it's got to be we've got to bring the like in Danny Ballard we bring him in we showcase him and it looks like he's now a lot of people know who Danny Ballard is and they know he can play in the championship quite uh, effectively so then that kind of puts him out of our price range and uh, we crack on. But I think that's similar to roles in, in the background staff as well. Um, we bring people in, give them a job in football, let them do the job in football. And then after a season, they're looking to, to move on already because they want to actually get paid and get some money. When they're looking around and seeing the other jobs on, on, on offer, are offering them more money but that's how it's got to be like we we can't have the money we don't have money to throw away um on all these um things on on the players and on on the, the staff as well we just got to hope that the steady supply of people who want to come in and do this job um are there so that when the, the people who've done it for a year move on that there's more people that we can bring in and uh move them along on the conveyor belt and uh, get them going into football and that's what if that's what you got to do that's what you got to do it is what it is um and on that note thank you for watching and goodbye